What is up YouTube? It is AvriLR32 here bringing you guys my top 48 Cosmo deck profile. First ever invite. Let's freaking go. 47th place. You guys are getting it. First time right here. Send it to Vexy. It might be up on his channel by now. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> but before I get into it, I just want to let you guys know thank you so much for all the support you've been showing on my channel. If you're a new subscriber coming from Vexy's channel or just coming from wherever you're, you've seen this deck list already, I don't know, be sure to subscribe, hit that like button, hit that favorite. This is a huge milestone for my Yu-Gi-Oh! career and hopefully you will also subscribe. I post great content, post almost daily, every other day at the very least. Hopefully you guys will enjoy the content. I also do gaming content as well. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy this video. Now before I get into the actual Cosmo deck profile, I did want to go over my uh, matchups and you know uh, my record and everything. So as you guys probably have already heard from my last video um, that I made on my ride home here, I went six and three. Um, <clears throat> round one, I played against my buddy. Shout out to you, Perry. Um, it was against Pepe. We went to three games. That was the game that I said in my last video where I activated Reasoning. He called eight, and if I could have hit a ship, I may have won. And my top card was Max C, because I side decked in two Max C's, and I had already used one. So, you know, no big deal. And what was really nice about all the people I played against was that they were really chill. If I lost, both games that I lost, it was because I deserved to lose. Like, there was nothing I could have done. Um, round two, I played against Ninjas. Uh, this guy was pretty bad. Uh, two owed him pretty easily. Um, and then round three, I played against... Uh, yeah, where'd it go? No, it's on the other notebook. Because I accidentally swapped notebooks in the middle of the event. So I'm, I would, like, have it on two separate ones. Round three, I played against Chaos Dragons. My buddy had played against this guy in, like, the first or second round. So uh, he said that he had, like, kind of just stopped playing since Dragon Ruler format. He almost beat me game one with Scarlight, uh, Red Dragon, Archfiend. And I ended up taking a 1,000 life points of damage because I forgot I had Special Summon Farm Girl off of Straw Man. So, uh, yeah. But I ended up uh, still winning that game. Two Odin, a uh, pretty chill guy. Round four, I played against Magic Specters. Shout out to this guy. I told him to check out my channel. We had a great game. It was his first regional. He ended up going 5-4 at the event, but super chill guy. He was playing Magic Specters. Uh, it was a really tough game. We went to three games, went into time, and I ended up getting to 8,500 because uh, I was using Forerunner and he was at 2,100. And he had to inflict like 7,400, I believe it was. Whatever, whatever math is. I don't want to do math right now. <laughs> um, and he couldn't do 7,400 points of damage uh, in order to tie up the game. And he couldn't do enough, obviously, to, you know, win. So he ended up scooping. Um, and it was just, it was a fantastic game. Best game throughout the entire day. Next, ne like, like his game, our game was better than me 2 0 and Carl Lippmann. Like, it, it was a great game. Round five, I played against Cyframes. Pretty chill guy. Um, Ended up 2 0ing him. Uh, went into game, or I didn't 2 0 him, excuse me. He beat me game one because he used Cyframe Circuit to uh, discard a Cyframe and damn it, he discarded Driver from his hand. And he had the Cyframe Synchro, not Omega, but the other one I had Forerunner, so I lost. I was only at 1500. Thought I had more life points than I actually had. Round six, I played against Cosmo Mirror and I lost. Um, and I did beat the Cyframe, I'm sorry. Game three, uh, he played an upstart and I attacked him with Farm Girl and kept on drawing and passing near the end of the game. He played another upstart and he just ended up losing because we went into time. So I did win that game. Uh, game I won game one and three. Round six, I got uh, two owed by Cosmo um, in the mirror. Round seven, I played against Infernoi, two owed him pretty easy. And then round eight, like I said, I, I played against Carl Lippmann and two owed him, really chill guy. He ended up basically uh, bricking game two, so nothing really to do about that. Round nine, I played against Clown Blade. Um, and that's where the deck, inf uh, deck fraction, uh, infraction came in because one of my sleeves was actually different. I didn't realize it, and I tried to tell the judges that, um, like I said in my last video. Uh, but it was all good. You know, no DQ, no nothing like that. It was all good, thank God. Um, but, yeah, so I ended up losing that game. Start uh, Went out 6-3, came to 47th place. So let's get into this top 48 deck profile uh, four minutes in. So we have three Farm Girl, your MVP. If you're not playing three, I don't know what you're doing. It's the best card out in the entire deck, hence why it's 40 to $50. Uh, and then we are playing one Good Witch and double Wicked Witch. Wicked Witch is busted as hell. Uh, the fact that you can sit on it and it's basically a start a Spark Dragon to, you know, stall turns by and just get your card pieces together is great. Good Witch, I ended up siding out a lot. Like, if I was siding in, like, Maxi or Thunder King, which you'll see in the side deck. Um, just because, you know, I want to be able to keep my monster count even or on an even length. Um, so I might bump it up to three Wicked Witch. I'm not too sure yet. Um, but it, it worked out. It was there when I needed it. Like, if I need to summon it and, like, attack and then banish to get out of big ship, it was, uh, it, w it was there when I needed it. And they were playing one straw man and one dogfighter. Dogfighter is good for the mirror match. Straw man was there when I needed it. I don't like two. Um, it just seems too much. Like, you know, 
you're able to recycle the one with Cosmo Town. Like, you essentially have two. You essentially have an extra Cosmo Town in the form of Straw Man because uh, if you have Cosmo Town on board, you can go Cosmo Town, pay 200, get Straw Man, play Straw Man, pay 500, get another card banish from your banished zone, and then you can attack with both and then banish Straw Man, get something else out from your hand. So it just helps recycle your banished cards better. So I don't really feel that two is necessary. Um, plus, if his uh, if his effect wasn't once per turn to pay 500, then I could see playing two because then you could do that same play I just mentioned except with the second Straw Man. Um, but, yeah, I just don't feel it's needed. And then we're playing Triple Slip Rider. This is where the deck infraction came in because one of my sleeves was different. Like, it was, it had more of a glossy feel to it, which I didn't even realize. Um, so, that was just my bad. Like, I thought all these sleeves were the same. I guess I just accidentally swapped them. But, yeah, we're playing uh, three Slip Rider, three Forerunner, and three of the big-ass Dark Shore. I might bump Forerunner down to two because I was bricking. Um, like, I bricked, like, I said once or twice. Um, and in the Cosmo Mirror game too, I did brick, so there there wasn't really a lot that I could do. Um, the other time I bricked, I was able to work through it because I had terraforming and like torrential, thank God. Um, but yeah, I might bump Forerunner down to two just because of the fact that I want to brick, you know, as the least amount as possible. Uh, I feel that three Dark Shore and three Slip Rider is still necessary just because it helps you recycle through your levels. Uh, once we hit the level nine. Uh, I might play one. I don't know yet. I have to test it because I'm obviously going to have to run three of the trap and maybe one or two tin can. Uh, it just really depends on what the format calls for and avoiding Cyber Dragon Infinity is going to be the number one thing to do for this upcoming format. And then instead of Honest, I'm playing Jurgato. I did test Honest. I hated it because I fell into the dumbass uh, play of trying to Honest on my Wicked Witch and it's a dark. So, <coughs> excuse me. So I ended up playing Jurgato. Um, several people had to read it. Even Carl Lippmann had to read it. Um, so yeah, the fact that it threw a lot of people off was really awesome. And keep in mind that you gain a thousand life points of resolution. So you know if they torrential you on the summon, you still get the extra one thousand life points. And it kind of acts like a battle fader in a way. Like if your opponent's trying to go for game and you have Jurgato, you're just like, nah, bro. There was never a time where I wish I had honest instead of Jurgato. This is too good. I might even bump it up to three. And then onto the spells. We're playing the obvious triple Cosmo Town, triple E Telly, triple Badass Reasoning, and the one Terraforming. Um, all these cards are necessary. The Terraforming is interchangeable. I was siding it out a lot. Um, you know, like if I would go to side in, like say Double Mind Crusher, if I side decked in like an MST, I would just take out Terraforming because after game one, you're pretty much going for more of a control base esque because you want to keep your opponent at your speed of playing, if not slower, just so that you are able to continuously OTK them. So that was my reasoning behind that. And then when, of course, we're playing the one Raigeki, uh, the double Dark Hole for your destruction. Uh, these can be side out against Magic Specters if you really wanted to. Uh, when I played against the Magic Specter guy that I had the awesome game with, um, they didn't really come in too much handy, but they were still good at the same time because the fact that he didn't just have Magic Specters on board uh, I just had to work around his tornadoes, and after I did that, I was able to clear his board with like a Dark Hole or Raigeki or something. What that game came down to was just the fact that he ended up running out of targets, and I was just playing around his Magic Specter tornadoes. Ended up playing through two. No, I popped one, and I played through two. So, yeah, that was uh, that was fun. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I, I feel that these are you know interchangeable. Some people like Raigeki, some don't. I I like the destruction; it helps clear your board. And then we're playing the Allure. This is um, able to be sided out if you want to. Uh, I like it because, you know, you can draw two and then banish Dark Shore, get it back with Cosmo Town or Straw Man. And then we're playing two MST. I might bump this up to three. Uh, might not, just because I like being able to pop back row. Um, I love being able to go, like, like usually something that I'll do is, like, I'll try and have the opponent bait out their back row, like if they have, like, two or three back row. Um, like, I'll go, like, e Telly and they'll go like vanities on chain MST. When I was playing against uh, Carl in round eight, he had three back row, a cyber dragon, and a Cosmo Town, and a Wicked Witch on board. And I went, um, what did I do? I had Wicked Witch on, I had my own Wicked Witch on board. And I went uh, Wicked Witch ability banish, and he, or no, I'm sorry. I went e Telly. he chains vanities, I chain Wicked Witch to banish his cost. He activates Mind Crush, calls Cosmo Dark Destroyer, and I'm sitting with cyber dragon, Slip Rider, this is in game two, Cyber Dragon, Slip Rider, Dark Hole, and like an Allure. And he was just like, damn, really? And so he ended up losing the one card in his hand, which was like a farm girl. And then uh, the chain resolved, I got out Slip Rider, he lost his vanities because a card went to the grave. 
and then um, my e telly fizzled out, and then Slip Rider popped his last back card, which was Escape from the Dark Dimension, and then I ended up swinging into his Wicked Witch. He paid a thousand, and then he lost fourteen, and then I ended up going main phase two, contact fusing with his own Chimera Tech, and then I set like some random back row, and then I think he like tributed his Wicked Witch for his Slip Rider to pop my back card. He swung over my Chimera Tech. I drew for turn. Special Summon Cyber Dragon made a second Chimera Tech attack. He was at a hundred, and I set like Torrential. He drew, played uh, Reasoning, I called 8, and the top card of his deck was uh, Dark Destroyer, and so I ended up winning that game. I was like, thank God. Um, and then for the traps, we're playing Warning, Torrential, Vanities, and my two techs, Time Space Trap Hole, and Escape from the Dark Dimension. Escape from the Dark Dimension is so good just because of the fact that, like, even against this one guy I was playing against, I had it set, and um, I think it was in, like, a Cos I think it was in, like, uh, the Cosmo Mirror that I lost or something. Or like a Magic Spectre match. I don't remember what game it was. But the guy went uh, MST or back card or something like that. Like he popped it. And I go chain, escape from the Dark Dimension. Get out Dark Destroyer, pop your card. Escape pops, Dark Destroyer pops. Uh, Dark Destroyer effect banish. Get out uh, Forerunner. And then he had to deal with a Forerunner. I think that was in the uh, Cyframe matchup. Which another cool thing about the Cyframe matchup was um, I ended up getting on a Slip Rider. And I asked for like a response. And he said no, and I went Torrential. And it went through. Well, because I did it on the summon, a cool trick, and this is kind of like a little uh, tip slash trick here. <laughs> um, when you play out Slip Rider, if your opponent activates, like, let's say Torrential or something, or if you do it on your own, like your own Torrential, if your opponent activates Torrential, like, you know, after you say that you're activating the effect, or even before you say that you're activating the effect, and Slip Rider pops, you can have Slip Rider activate as a double chain link, meaning that once he goes to grave off of the off of the torrential or something similar like torrential, you can activate him as a chain link one and a chain link two, and then you can have the the popping of the spell or trap be on chain link one or chain link two, uh, or or vice versa with the banishing ability. So I ended up doing the spell and trap popping on chain link two, and then the banishing on chain link one. So his ability to pop a spell or trap. Uh, happened in the grave against the Cyframe player. So I popped one of his back cards and then uh, I banished his cost to get out like a Wicked Witch or something. Um, and time and space was good. I didn't really use a lot. It was there when I needed it. I might bump it up to two, but at the same time I might take both of these traps out for uh, the new trap that we're getting. Um, so I'm not sure, but I really like time space. It was there when I needed it. So yeah, that is the main deck. And then for the uh, bleh, my deck. There we go. Um, for the side deck, we have one Nightmare Shark, and before you ask, no, I did not make a single damn thing in this extra deck. Uh, Batalamus, Honor Arc, Castell, Cowboy, Dyer, Abyss Dweller, Diamond, Tweedies, Bulk, Sexy Ghost Rare Flare Metal, Gaia Dragon, Felgren, and then the only thing that I made, which was round 8 against Carl, the Double Chimera Tech. Um, I could have had the ability to make a rank 4, because game 1 against Carl before he scooped, I had Jurigato, Dark Destroyer, and Good Witch, uh, but I figured it'd be better just to leave the Jurigato on board and boost up one of my monsters by a thousand if I needed to. Um, because even after I attacked with everything, it wasn't going to be enough to do Cowboy for game because then he was still going to have like 1,200 left, so I figured I need to keep my field presence on board and give myself as many options as possible. Um, and side deck, um, I do not have it on me. I don't know where it went. It must still be in my deck box, but it was uh, one Skill Drain, Three Mind Crush, uh, Triple Cyber Dragon, Double Artifact Lancia, which I ended up never siding the uh, Lancias, uh, but they were there in case, like, you know, like I had, like, some sort of obligatory, uh, what do you call it, um, like Necroz matchup or something. Um, so Triple Cyber Dragon, Double Max C, which I side decked in all day, Double Lancia, one Thunder King, one MST, Triple Mind Crush. Double Fairy Wind, which were uh, decent. They were pretty good. Um, I side decked them, and then uh, someone ended up playing Double Impure Iron Wall on me, and I activated uh, Fairy's, Fairy Wind, and he ended up scooping. Um, I was waiting, because I knew that he had two in his hand. Because um, when he drew, I saw it, because he accidentally dropped the card, so I was lucky on that aspect. Um, and then Triple Mind Crush and Skildren. That was my entire side deck. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, the skill drain, I never side decked, but it was there if I needed it, and actually kind of helped me in game one against, um, in round eight against the other Cosmo Mirror, uh, which was the Carl Lippmann match, uh, because I was pretty much just using the skill drain to my advantage, uh, just banishing my little guys as cost, and then getting off my, uh, 
my monsters. Um, but yeah, so that is pretty much it, you guys. If you enjoyed, please leave a like or a favorite. Where the hell is my farm girl? I want to put it on top. You know what, Skirt? We'll do Dark Shore because that's the more expensive part. <clears throat> but yeah, you guys, this is my top 48 uh, Cosmo deck. I'm, I'm still speechless, as you can tell. Like, I'm just amazed at the fact that I topped, like, oh my god, it was just insane. I'm, I'm so I'm so happy to be able to go to Nats now. Um, hopefully it's not in Detroit, because I don't want to get shot. <laughs> um, or go to 8 Mile. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm so happy that I got my invite. I, I kicked some serious ass at that regional. I did not play against any pushovers, really. Um, everyone was fairly difficult to an extent. Um, especially that Magic Spectre guy. Um, he was super chill. Uh, like I said in my last video, I saw a fan there. I talked with him for a few minutes. Really chill guy. Um, but yeah, so I'm just, I'm happy to have topped. Hopefully this is on Vexy's channel. If not, then I'll go into a corner and cry. <laughs> but anyways, thank you guys for watching as always. And if you're logged into a YouTube account, be sure to like and or favorite. And be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe.